Oh, hello. My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Woe. Okay guys, I am going to revive a tag that I created in 2018 best and worst of book series book tag 2018 and we're going to do the 2019 version the reason that i made this and the reason that i'm doing this video is because i'm definitely somebody who reads a lot of standalones or who reads um things that are not primarily understood in the context of a series right but i also read a lot of series i read in a lot of series because i am a fantasy reader a sci-fi reader a romance reader a mystery reader reader of genres that are prone to have series and i think at the end of the year sometimes we get very focused on individual books, but I, w I also like to take a step back and kind of celebrate books that are in a series and may not rise to the level of like your specific favorite book of the year, but that the overall experience of reading a series in a given year can be one of your favorite things. Now that was more true for me in 2018. In 2019, just looking through some of my lists that I've been putting together. I do think I have a lot more series representation in those lists, but the principle still stands, which is aside from any one book, I just want to pause and have a moment of celebrating series that I read this year and enjoyed slash talk about some series that I was not as impressed with. So this is a book tag. Uh, if you would like to do this, definitely feel free to go for it. I will leave all the questions and my answers in the description box below. And uh, yeah, so let me just dive on in. I'm going to do these same, it was interesting doing these same questions from last year for this year, because last year I crafted the questions with the series that I had read in mind. So it was interesting mapping that into this year's reading. And I did add a couple of questions that occurred to me. So anyway, enough of my app and let's get into the questions. And just so you know, in theory, you only have to answer one for any of these, but I'm a big fat cheater. So I will often be giving multiple answers for any of these questions. So the first question is, what is the best series that you caught up with this year that is still a work in progress? Meaning you are now up to date on the series as of this year, but there are going to be more books released in the series. So unquestionably and unsurprisingly, my answer to this has to be the In-Death series from J.D. Robb. If you watch this channel, you know that it has been a multi-year project to catch up with these books. The 50th book in this series will be released in February. And by the end of the year, I will be fully caught up and ready to receive the blessing of that 50th book. So this has to be my primary answer here. I love the series. There's a bonus question here, but um, this idea of a, a series being greater than the sum of its parts, this is a great example of that for me because I think I only have one book in this entire series I've given a full five stars to, but the overall series as a whole is definitely an all-time favorite, so therefore a five star. So anyway, this had to be my real, my like, my answer, but I do want to shout out that I also read both books in the Sixth World series this year, which I absolutely loved. I cannot wait for the third one to come out next year. So I am caught up and ready to receive the blessing of that book. And then surprisingly, guys, I caught up with Nevermore this year. If you guys watch this channel, you know that like I lost this for a couple of weeks when I was in the middle of it because I moved and therefore I just totally lost my steam. But in the month of November, I got my steam back and I ended up reading both of these. So I'm ready for the third one to come out next year. So that's a series that are still in progress that I am caught up with and ready for the next book. Okay, question number two is what is the best series that is a work in progress that you are still catching up on? So this year I did make a little bit more progress in the Knitting in the City series from Penny Reed. I think I only have one I have one novel and one novella left to catch up with this, and then I'll be ready to transition into the Beard series. But I continue to just really like the way Penny Reed does contemporary romance. You will see another series from her on this list. Uh, but yeah, these are just really fun contemporary romances that tend to be pretty slow burn, which is something I like. And um, yeah, just a friend group and them all getting together and finding love. Question number three is, what is your favorite first book in a series that you read this year? So this is a little bit of a surprise for me. So I tend to be someone who, who will try a lot of first books and not necessarily continue on in a series. Like I, you know, I don't feel a kind of compulsion to keep going if I start. So I try a lot of different things. Um, I could have, I guess I should have kind of a dual answer to this really. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to grab a second book to also put in here. But the one that surprised me that I liked so much was Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahern. If we're talking about, um, sequels that I'm most excited about for next year this is the sequel to this is one of them like I just I feel like this was a really good example of a book that like knows what it is 
it is good at what it is. You can just have fun with it. I think also this may have benefited from the fact that I feel like this year's YA fantasy lineup in terms of first book releases was kind of weak. I wasn't that impressed with a lot of them, which we'll talk about later. Um, and this was definitely my favorite of the ones that I've read so far, at least as of this filming. Um, I really, I just really like this and I'm excited to keep going with it, which kind of surprised me. So um, I gave that one four stars. I also gave four stars and really enjoyed the book The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. So I would say that this is probably my other favorite first book in a series in terms of excited to keep going in the series. A lot of really interesting build up in this one that makes me intrigued to keep going. I would also put this one on there. Not a new release, but one that I still really enjoyed. Okay, speaking of YA fantasy that I was a little disappointed in, um, number four is what is a first book in a series you read this year that you think should have just been a standalone? and not a series. And this is a question I put on there because I think sometimes, I don't know if it's like publishing pressure in terms of like making more books so you can get more money from things. I don't know. But like, I think often I read books that I think, why is this the beginning of series? Why can this not just be a book unto itself? The book that um, most fit that this year for me was A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kammerer. I think I would have liked this book far better if it had been set up to be a standalone and not the beginning of a series. Luckily, I got a heads up from Bethany at Beautifully Bookish Bethany that that was the case, but I didn't realize that going into this book that it was the first in a series until she said something. And I think if I had known that, I would not have requested it because it's fine, it's fine, but I think it could have been really good if it wasn't a bunch of buildup and if it had just been a discrete story unto itself. So I know that might be a slightly unpopular opinion I think a lot of people really like that book this year. But for me, I think the fact that it was the beginning of a series really dinged it down for me in terms of some of the choices that got made. Then number five is what is your most overhyped series of the year? And I'm gonna go with Wicked Saints by Emily Duncan. I feel bad because I like a lot of the things, I like a lot of the ideas in this book, especially around religion. That is something that always is exciting to me in YA when it, it takes um, kind of those themes seriously. Like that's something in Serpent and Dove, what we were talking about earlier that it does. And I liked that piece of Wicked Saints, like the ideas there, but just the pacing of it was real not great for me. I didn't feel like the world was cool enough to overcome some of that. Like it was, it was cool. It was fine, but it, it, I don't know. It didn't do a lot for me there. I think that the kind of triangle that's getting set up wasn't, I don't know. I just feel like there was a lot of hype for that book. And I think when it actually came out, it wasn't talked about as much. And I think that there's a reason for that. I want to say it was a debut novel. So some of the issues with this might get addressed in the second book, because of course we all, you know, have room to have a first go at things and learn from it. So this may be a situation where the subsequent books get better. But for me, that book was pretty overhyped. I would say the, the second place for me would also be The Gilded Wolves by Rashani Chakshi. Uh, again, just one that I felt like, yeah, it had some cool ideas. I gave, I think I gave the Wicked Saints, I gave Wicked Saints three stars. I gave the Gilded Wolves three and a half stars, but maybe I put it back down to a three. I can't remember. I thought it was perfectly fine, but I think given the amount of hype I heard around it, I didn't think it was like anything all that exciting. So I don't know. Those were the two that probably were the most overhyped to me this year. Okay, and I guess continuing continuing on in this theme of me uh, being a little disappointed by YA fantasy this year. Number six is, what is a series that you DNF this year? Meaning that you had read at least one book prior to the book that you read this year, and this was the year that you were just like, I'm giving up on this series. For me, that was, I believe it's called the Mirror Visitor series by Christelle DeBeau. And yeah, so I read the first one and didn't love it, because the writing didn't work for me. That's what a lot of it boils down to for me on this one, because I really like the world and I like the plot. The characters were not my favorite in the first one, but I saw some promise. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep going to the second one. And then when I tried to read the second one, I got like 100 or 150 pages in and I was like, I'm just not enjoying this. The writing really is a barrier for me. And the characters, I just am not connecting with enough to carry me through. But I do really like the world building in it and like the overall plot because it's a lot of like political intrigue in a fantasy world, which tends to be something that I like. But yeah, I DNF that that series this year, I'm not gonna keep going, which bummed me out because it, it was a series that I liked the idea of more than I liked the actual books, if that makes sense. So that's ultimately why I decided like, I gotta, I gotta cut the cord here and cut my losses. Okay, so number seven, moving in a more positive direction is what is your favorite series finale of the year? So favorite final book in a series. And for me, that would definitely be Holy Sister by Mark Lawrence. 
this is which is interesting because it's actually my least favorite of the three books just because i am somebody who tends to be kind of hard to please on a series finale to be honest with you but uh i i even though it was my least favorite of the three it was still incredibly strong i gave this four stars and that series as a whole is just so great and i feel like that for the most part this was a really satisfying ending to that trilogy you know it wrapped up the things i wanted it to wrap up it answered things I had questions about. There was a lot of really good action. I think the thing that really held this book back to me from being just like great was the fact that it did have this dual timeline thing. And I think of the three books, this is the one where that worked the least for me. You guys know I'm always a little bit of a hard sell on that anyway, but anyway. All that being said, this makes it sound like I didn't like this. I really, I mean, it's my favorite finale of the year. And I, I think that he pretty much stuck the landing on this one. There's gonna be a spinoff series next year, so. Yeah, I'm pumped for that. Overall, this was really, really good. Okay, and then number eight is what is the biggest cliffhanger you had in a series this year? So, you know, when you're in the middle of a series, often there will be a book where like shit hits the fan and then you're just on the edge of your seat waiting for the next one to find out what happens. For me, the biggest one that falls into that category is The Dragon Republic by R.F. Kuang because the way that this leaves off, I was just like, what? Like I've got, <laughs> what's going to happen? There's such a, it's not, I don't know twist is quite the right word, but just like the way things unfold in the final little bit of this book is just so like, oh, like, and then this happened and then this happened and then, oh my God, like there's just so much going on right at the end of this one that when it ends, you're just sort of like, oh my God, <laughs> like I gotta find out what happens next. So I'm so excited for the uh, next book in this series, which I believe will come out next year. I need to double check because on Goodreads, it was a little, I couldn't quite tell, but I'm so excited to find out what happens in this. I think that this is shaping up to be a really, really strong fantasy trilogy. I've liked both of the books. I gave both of the first two books four stars because there are problems that I had, but overall, the experience of both of those books, because I read both of them this year. Did I read the Pop? Yeah, I think I also read The Poppy War at the very beginning of the year. Um, I, reading both of them overall was like a four and a half, but this specific, the specific books are four stars. Anyway, I'm rambling at this point. I'm just very excited to find out like what the fuck happens after the ending of this book. Number nine is what is your favorite spinoff series you read this year or started this year? Uh, and what I mean by that is, and I think people who don't read in series may not realize this all the time, but often even if a certain series ends, there will be subsequent series in the same world or with the same characters that come out. Um, so you don't have to fully end your time <laughs> with that specific series that you love so much. And for me, my favorite beginning of a spinoff series was definitely Sapphire Flames by Alona Andrews. Y'all know I am just an absolute sucker for anything related to Alona Andrews, like favorite current writing author, blah, blah, blah. You've heard it all before if you watch this channel. And this is essentially the second beginning of a second trilogy in their Hidden Legacy series, which is a near future, like an urban fantasy basically, where there's all of these powerful families that have like genetically bred magic into their families. And they have like all of these political things happening. So like there's political machinations, there's mystery, there's romance, there's fantasy, like mm, just all the things I love in this series. and loved this can't wait for the next one i mean need i say more if you watch this channel you know i'm just an absolute sucker for these books and uh this one did not disappoint and you know i will say there was a risk that it would disappoint me because this was the little sister of the main character of the first trilogy and this is definitely a different type of main character that they've ever had in a series before so i liked that they were taking a risk in terms of some of her personality traits are quite different than sort of the stereotypical Ilona Andrews main character. I think some of the conflicts were new. So like, I also feel like they were doing something new in this book and I still loved it, which just speaks to the fact that they're just the best. Number 10 is what is your most anticipated next book in a series that you read this year that will come out next year? Meaning, it, it's, I had a hard time figuring out how to word this, but basically like, okay, so you have caught up with the series or like you were reading in a series this year, and there's a new book coming out next year that you are excited about. Network Effect, which is the first full novel in the Murderbot series, and I read the entire Murderbot series this year. So yeah, I cannot wait for that one. That comes out, I think, in May. And uh, so that's definitely for a, a series that I was reading this year with a book that comes out next year, unquestionably Network Effect. Number 11 is what is your most anticipated series to catch up with next year based on what you read in the series this year? So it doesn't have to be new releases coming out next year, but just like, hey, you read some of a series this year, 
which of those makes you most excited to keep reading in that series next year. And I decided to go with The Blade itself, that series from Joe Abercrombie. So I'm most excited to get to Before They Are Hanged next year from Joe Abercrombie. Um, I'm not sure if I'll finish both this and The Last Argument of Kings. The other thing is to do this, I kind of want to reread The Blade itself before I move on because I feel like I spaced that one out so much that I lost some of the nuance of it. So I may have to do a reread of that one before I get to this one. We'll see. Number 12 is what is your favorite overall series that you finished this year? So not just caught up with, but actually like you're done with it. I have to say Miss Marple from Agatha Christie because while I had read most of the books in that series prior to doing Mission Marple this year, I did finish up all of the Marple books this year and I absolutely loved it. And I found a new favorite Marple, which is Sleeping Murder. Um, I would have told you, I think at the beginning of the project, I thought The 13 Problems was my favorite. Um, and upon finishing the series, I would actually say Sleeping Murder is my favorite from Agatha Christie and her Marple series. So I definitely have to say this one. I'm a sucker for Agatha Christie. She is my favorite author ever. So the fact that I got to finish one of her series this year was lovely. Number 13 is what is your favorite episodic series of the year? And so what I was trying to get to with this question, if I'm remembering rightly, is that we often talk about series in terms of ones that are truly serialized in a way that they are happening sequentially and like there's you know often some somewhat of a cliffhanger or you want to have know what happens next in the overall plot arc that it's like once basically we often talk about series that are one story told over however many books but there are also series where they truly are episodic so think of it more of like kind of like a police procedural crime show on tv like a csi or whatever where every week you get a new story with the same characters and there's some continuity between different episodes but that's not the main point the main point is that week's story so that is what i think of as episodic books and i've already mentioned my two favorites um which are uh miss marple and the in death series of course less so in this one this one is closer to being purely episodic in death definitely has overall plot things that are happening very slowly over the course of the books and a lot of like character development even more so over the course of the books but for both of these you really can read these as standalones if you wanted to you wouldn't get as much out of them in terms of like knowing the characters and whatever but they can be read individually they're not a part of like a sequential story in the same way something like you know the blade itself is a part of a sequential story or the sixth world is a part of a sequential story etc number 14 is what is a series you finally bailed on after hold on holding on to it for a long time um and i don't know so i had two thoughts on this one one was the witchland series but i plan to go back and finish that one once they've all been released i've only bailed on keeping up with the releases just because they're so detailed that the fact that there's been gaps between when i can read them has made me not enjoy them as much so i just decided to press pause and i'm going to do a full series binge once all of those books are out the only other one that like i think i and to some degree have bailed on that I thought of was the Rock Chick series from Kristen Ashley just because I really after that first book or two I just realized that the formula that she's working with in that series really rubs me the wrong way I'm not enjoying it and even though I ended up I think buying several of them because they went on sale for like 99 cents or 199 I think I'm pretty much just gonna say that I'm not planning to read those maybe if just like that specific mood strikes but I don't know. I think I think I'm done with that one. And then number 15 is what is the series that you are most surprised that you liked this year? I think that's what it was. Yeah. What is the series that you were most surprised that you liked this year? So I actually picked two um, and I was surprised. They're both romance series and I was surprised for different reasons. Um, that I guess somewhat related. So first is the uh, Kissing Professors series, Dear Professor book. There you go. Dear Professor series from Penny Reed. I really hope there's going to be more. There's only two so far. The reason I've been surprised about this is because the trope she's playing with is a professor-student relationship. There's a lot of like intrinsic power uh, questionableness baked into that. And I, you know, I really like Penny Reed and I think I got the first one on sale or something. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try this. But I really like how she's actually playing with power dynamics in these books. Very, like that seems to be an explicit part of what she's doing. She's sort of turning some of those tropes on their head a little bit in ways that I've really enjoyed. And particularly in the second one, I think she also is subverting a lot of ideas about like male body image that I thought was really interesting. So anyway, I just, I've been surprised at how much I liked those books books because 
there was a lot of potential for pitfalls. Not perfect, but they're re I really enjoyed them and I really enjoyed her kind of tinkering with power dynamics. The second series I've been in surprise that I like so much is the Deadlands series by Katie Wilde. And honestly, just like do, be totally transparent about why I've been surprised by this is because I went into this expecting just another sort of like silly, smutty fantasy romance series. And it is those things, but the world building in this is actually surprisingly pretty interesting and pretty good. And I also, there's also a lot of power dynamic stuff in these that I think are really interesting um, that I enjoy watching her play with. And, and the more, Katie Wilde is a new author to me this year. And uh, I've really enjoyed going through her backlist because that's very clearly something she's interested in is, kind of mixing up the power dynamics. So in this series, there's all of these like barbarian, like really tough warrior fantasy guys. Um, but then the women always have these interesting kind of like powers over them or like different social stations that give them different power. Anyway, I've just been surprised at how much I really do like this series. There's three of them so far and I'm really excited to see what else is gonna happen in this world. Okay, and then I did add two bonus questions this year. One is what is a series that you meant to catch up with or finish this year that you didn't? So like, <laughs> what did you not get done this year? And I have three that came to mind. One was the Heartstone series by L. Catherine White. I meant to read Dragon Shadow early in the year so that I could then read Flamebringer by the end of the year. I don't think that's going to happen. So that's a bummer. The Beard series by Penny Reed. I was expecting to make more progress in the Penny Reed and those two interrelated series, The Knitting in the City and the Beard series. I didn't really read, I didn't read any of the Beard series this year. So I'm going to put that on my to-do list for next year. And then the Tracer series from Laura Griffith. I've read a couple of them, but I really like the way she does romantic suspense. They're very focused on the mystery and just have the romantic element sort of supporting, which is what I tend to like in a romantic suspense. I really enjoyed those and I think that's a series I would like. Um, so that, again, I think I'm putting that kind of on the docket for next year is to to catch up with some of those. So those were ones that I meant to catch up with or finish this year that I didn't. And then the final extra question that I added for this year is what is a series that you finished this year that you think the whole of it is greater than the sum of its parts? So like I was kind of talking about in the beginning with the In Death series, that's definitely how I feel about that, that yes, on an individual book basis, I have one five star, a couple of four and a half, a lot of fours, and then a lot of three and a halves. So you know, if I'm looking at a book to book basis, are they like always my favorite books? No, but as a whole, I love that series. It's a favorite series for me. And as a whole, I would give that five stars. The other one that really I, I've come to feel that way about is the Book of the Ancestor series. I gave, so there's three books and a novella. I gave one book four and a half stars, the novella four and a half stars, and then two books four stars. But as a whole, I definitely feel like the Book of the Ancestor series is a favorite fantasy series for me. So um, that was my other bonus question when I was sort of looking at my rating for the year. So that is my best and worst book series book tag for 2019. Um, like I said, I did this last year and it's kind of fun to map the books that I read this year onto the questions I wrote last year. And uh, yeah, I definitely open it up for you guys. If you would like to do this tag, definitely feel free. Um, I wanna celebrate the fact that, you know, sometimes even if an individual series book isn't your favorite for the year, often the experience of reading a series or reading in a series can be some of your favorite reading experiences. So that's sort of the spirit with which I offer this tag and these questions. So yeah, definitely let me know below what some of your best and worst series were this year or any thoughts that you have about the books that I mentioned. And yeah, I think that that will do it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all of that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you guys are having an absolutely lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.